Okay. I think it's not working. I think we got stuck. Hi, everybody. Tuesday TED Talk. We're still working out uh, some technical, some technical issues. issues with Instagram, which froze on me. Oh, God. Um, oh, th that's movement. Go live. Okay. Sorry. Sorry for that close up of <laughs> moi. Here we are. <laughs> Here we are. We made it. Um, uh, we're going to sit, I guess, back there because Guinevere likes it in the back. Oh, oh. Like, whoa, dude. Um, no, I don't know. There's a really good perch here. There we go. Okay, you guys, this is a total F up <laughs> moment, but because we, we got in the tub lane. All right, so welcome to Tuesday Tub Talk. Hello, hello. Most of you probably know this is my lovely friend, Guinevere Turner. Hi. And uh, Guinevere was in the tub. When were you in the tub? Maybe two years ago. Two years ago, before we made Crazy Bitches. The series. We made, the after series. we made the movie. Yeah, before yeah. we made the, the series, uh, we did a little pep talk, and then time went by. A lot of time. Which, by the way, I can officially announce that we are uh, releasing August 16th. I'll have more news as it gets closer, but the web series will be available finally August 16th. And I'm a big fan of the tagline, which I only saw recently. Um, so the whole thing takes place at a wellness spa. And you're like, well, wait, what is it? Wellness just got sick? Wellness is about to get sick. Wellness is about to get sick. Wellness is, is about to and clever. get sick. <laughs> uh, which it is. And I'll have a trailer coming out soon. I don't know. I had to do a, this is kind of interesting. I had to do a, a green band trailer, what they call a green band trailer. For iTunes, and they made me take the word bitch out of the trailer. Did I tell you that? No, and blink, blink, that's like, yeah. that's the title, like, I mean, the title must come up in the trailer, so nobody says, like, how did you, how did you even navigate that? I had to just take it out, no, the, the, the title comes up, and I even am allowed to use bitch and bitches in the synopses, but I can't verbally, nobody, nobody can verbally can say, say it. Yeah, Who knew I, that you can't say bitch on iTunes? Like, I, I did not. Oh, we don't even have any bubbles. No, we're I always like, forget the bubbles. Well, like, guys, gosh we're just darn like, it. Us this soup. is just like a crazy, <laughs> crazy backwards start. Um, yeah? What? Uh, oh, Paulette, hi Paulette. Jean, Sherry, hi. Hi. Sherry, you'll probably be coming down for the, the events, I would expect. Um, so anyway, yeah, they made me take crazy bitches. They made me take bitches out of the trailer. So in no, on iTunes, there's no place where you get to hear the word bitch out loud, God forbid. But actually, now that I'm thinking about it, do we? does anyone say the word bitch a lot? Well, no, but John asks you if you're gonna be a bitch all weekend. So there's that. So there's that. <laughs> and uh, Honey calls the other girls bitches. So, yeah. There's a couple of instances. I dug around for them, but there's a couple of instances they made, made me take them all out. But I just find it interesting. And, and so because of that, and then you also have to be careful what you put in it, in the trailer. Uh, it's a very tame... Uh, representation? Representation. I think this actually made me think of an interesting question, which is how we feel about the word bitch. How do we feel about the word bitch? I mean, I feel like we may have lost perspective because we've said it so much because of your projects. Mm -hmm. Um, how do I feel about the word bitch? Um, would I call a woman a... I would never call a woman a bitch in a negative way. Right. I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't use it in a derogatory way. I would... Uh, and I'm so 100% sure that I've been called a bitch behind my back. That's, that's especially why I wouldn't ever use it in a negative way. But I would use it in a friendly um, yeah. kind of like... I don't know. Like some people say, you go girl, I might say, get a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's a very, very friendly thing to say. Yeah. I think, you know, I, I think that the world has changed in terms of the use. And I think people use it as a friendly way a lot of times. And particularly on television, you hear it all the time on television. I mean, people just say it all the time on television, so the fact they can't put it in a trailer seems a little ridiculous to me, but um, I, I am okay with the word bitch. I think that it's all about intention. No matter what the word is, it's all about intention, right? Yeah. So, Indeed. I, if you remember uh, 
back to see uh, the feature, when we went to Frame Line, we uh, asked everybody what they thought about the word bitch, and then I did a whole trailer. I did a whole uh, little Was it not thing all good? No, it was good. It was good. Everybody had a positive because, of course, they were promoting crazy bitches. Yeah, bitch is a great word. But I mean, hilariously, when you and I first met, we were introduced at a party for Outfest, the LGBT festival here, and uh, somebody said, like, oh, Jane's making a movie called Crazy Bitches, and I was like, you should know me. Yeah. And you were like, I don't know who you are, but you seem like a crazy bitch for even saying that. Uh. And <laughs> Well, I said that silently. I didn't say I, that out loud. I heard did it. I? I, heard, I have ESP. Um, but I didn't. But I I mean, that just points to the conversation where I'm like, I identify as a crazy bitch. You know, but I mean, and also the word crazy is, you know, it's uh, loaded. It's loaded. And uh, but the two of them together and in the context of comedic horror to me was like, oh my God, I need to know this lady. Yeah, you didn't even hesitate. <laughs> you didn't even hesitate. She didn't. And for those of us, because Outfest is going on right now, and for those of you who know knew JD De Salvatore, she's the she's the person who introduced us. So, RIP JD. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, so we were uh, going along our merry way, trying to get work done, and waiting for Crazy Bitches to come out. And in the meantime, you went off in a road, and then got made an amazing movie. I did. Yeah, I read that. That's what the that's what the note said. The publicist sent me over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I uh, yes, I wrote a movie, uh, my third collaboration with the director, um, called Charlie Says. Uh, in 2014, I got hired to write this movie. It's about the women who um, went to prison for killing for Charles Manson, and uh, the movie came out in May. So, for anyone who's watching, go see. isn't patient at all, don't go into screaming. Because it took five years. Oh, I know, <laughs> it it's took so five true. Years. Kimmy, Alba, Marlene, and Katie. Hi, guys. Uh, so, yeah, that, that came out in May. Uh, it, you know, it came out in theaters briefly, and then they, you know, they would send me, like, the breakdown. And after a month, I was like, <gasps> still in Anchorage. Still representing an anchorage, but the well, thing is, right. like, but you know, for I think indie films, you know, they don't necessarily have a big theater life. They they have like it's almost it's not a vanity thing. I, I guess well, for one thing, it's an award thing, right? Like right, you don't, you right. don't get to get be a qualified for certain awards if you're not in theaters. But also, it's sort of I mean, I I love it even though it was short lived and it made like forty two thousand dollars in its opening weekend. I was like. Uh-huh. We're <laughs> so, I mean, that, is, <laughs> that is a lot of why people do do it, you know, to put put a movie in a theater so you can say I had a movie in the theater. But also, oh my gosh, you guys, it's a rare sighting of a crazy um, beat. Miss Marbles, you're not hitting the camera, right? Hi, Mama, you're not hitting my camera, right? Oh, right, you guys, you have to meet Green Bear's little dog. Hi, baby. Oh, oh she's shy. She's, she's so rescue. she's so cute. I'm gonna be taking care of her for the next couple months. I'm very excited. She, um, but you know, oh, see you later. Oh, going off to cute. see Bob. All right. Um, that's her new set, Papa. So you know. Yeah, she better <laughs> like him. Uh, but no, movies going into theaters are actually they considered a loss leader in order to sell on iTunes and Google Play and all that stuff for a higher price point. So iTunes, those guys, all, all the platforms set your price, and they determine how much you're, they're going to sell your movie for, dependent on whether it's played the theaters or not. And maybe depending on the, whether it's played festivals, too. I don't know. I really don't. Um, I, uh, one of the sort of, like, un, you can't buy this kind of marketing things that happened to us, but Charlie says, is that Quentin Tarantino's movie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, is coming out. Uh, at the end of the week, I think. But it means that there's a whole new round of people just mentioning our movie in yeah, the press, which is good. fantastic. Uh, and, you know, literally stuff you can't buy. Yeah. Um, and I wrote to Mary Heron, the director, and I was like, it's happening, like the whole flurry. And she was like, send me anything interesting. And I was like, well, interesting what? is so subjective, yeah. even though we've written three movies together. Like, yeah. what do you mean by that? And she goes, to be honest, just good. 
Oh yeah. Well, don't send her the bad stuff. See, know? like I don't know. I, how do you handle um, bad, negative, or mixed reviews? Because I, I'm you know, like a rubber necking, you know, train wreck watching fool. Like I can't not uh, look. Yeah. And Mary is like has a husband who will read everything for her and like point to the ones that will make her feel good right. and it's just it's a really it's been a really funny dynamic for us Mary and I because she, I will like I will just read a review and I will just be like like everything about this is so misogynist and so gendered and blah, 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 froth, froth, froth. and be like and I can't write to Mary about it. Or like, <laughs> write to her husband about it, and he's like, froth is back with me, yeah. and we like froth together. But like Mary's like, I just can't. And I and it's and which one of the things she said that I thought was really interesting was she doesn't, especially when our movie when we were still promoting our movie was that she didn't want to talk about she didn't want to talk or, or read negative reviews while still talking to journalists because she didn't want to be bitter or reactive yeah. or defensive. Fair. And I was like, that's fair. I think it's like so wise. <laughs> You know, I, with Crazy Bitches, well, not, I, actually, with everything, I, I read my reviews. I read them, and, and everything I've ever done has had, including all the shorts, has sort of had a split thing where, you know, some people just think I'm, like, the smartest thing going, and other people think I'm the biggest, stupidest, dumbest person on the face of the earth. <laughs> and, it, and it is really weird, but I had some reviews for Crazy Bitches where they got facts wrong. Like, basic facts, like names of characters... Spellings of actors' names. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, and, so and how how far into the the big one was how far into the show this was the one that really got me. How far into the show there was a kill. And someone had said there wasn't a kill until fifty minutes in, which for horror fans is not good. But like But Candace, somebody dies gets, in the first yeah, yeah, Candace gets killed, I get killed a half hour later, like I know, like, but we die. don't see you die on camera. Um, and you don't see the dead body afterwards. And apparently what I found out was there, when people don't see somebody die, they assume that they're probably coming back. And so people like ha have a thing about that. And I actually didn't even have a I didn't have any images of Mary dead. I didn't have any images of Candace dead. So I went back and shot images of them dead and put them in the show, in the film, now show, uh, just because I didn't that's want, what people well, want. because that's what people wanted. I'm well, like, oh, you want to see that? You don't believe their dead body? They're dead. When Crazy Bitches the movie showed at Outfest, uh, what was that, 20, 2015? Um, 24, 24, summer 2014. You asked me not to give spoiler alerts, mm -hmm. so I couldn't tell my friends who wanted to see a movie then, and like, I die in the first 30 minutes. Spoiler alert, I die in the first 30 minutes. But so a friend of mine came, and they were like, Oh my god, you're amazing. We, love we want our money back. Like, no, they just said, like, we assumed because you died so early that you were going to come yeah. back and not really be dead. See? And I was like, Jane. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, I did bring you back, didn't I? Yes. Didn't I? I made she, up like, for it. She went into, like, a, a meta space. Like, yeah. I, I'm, like, the character I play in the Crazy Bitches web series is a completely different person. It is a completely different person. Surrounded by actors who are playing the same characters and, and different characters. Yeah. <laughs> Because I can. Because I can. Because you can. Right? And why not? I mean, subs do it all the time. And, you know, she didn't know me, so she didn't realize that like, killing me off in the first 30 minutes was, was like, a big mistake. <laughs> I'm so hot right now, I can try. Oh, are you? Drink water. Are you not? Drink water. Drink water. Are you not, like, okay. roasting? Bob and I do this almost every night. Uh. So, I know. I'm, I'm hot, but I'm fine. Um, so, Charlie Says came out. That was exciting. You had that article in the New Yorker, which... Okay, so now Guinevere is officially an essayist. It's very exciting. Yes, I wrote an essay that amazingly got into The New Yorker, which is great. Which now means that um, it, it was about my childhood, uh, which I grew up in a cult. And uh, it's, it now means that a lot of people are reaching out to me who also grew up in cults or were in cults at some point in their life. Uh, it's created like, a big culty conversation, which has been which is great. kind of fascinating. Conversation uh, with your friends, conversation with strangers, conversation... Predominantly strangers who feel like what I wrote gave them a kind of voice mm -hmm. or I articulated something about when you grow up in, you know, the C word, uh, it's not necessarily all bad. It's just, uh, I was just trying to really write about how it's, you know, that was my childhood, so it's not quantifiable in any particular singular way. 
And I feel like a, a lot of people uh, responded to that and really wanted just to reach out and say, I get what you mean because I can't really talk about my childhood because people immediately hear cult and are like, ooh, weird, right. you're crazy. And I'm like, no, right. but also like, we plan on the swings. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, it's like anybody's childhood to the extreme, but there's good and there's bad. And you have good experiences and understand yourself through them, and you have bad experiences, and hopefully you learn something and go, go through it, whatever that is. Yours is just at the nth degree in terms of the swings, you know, the good and the bad swings. But Is it okay if I sit here because I'm so no, off that yeah. if I don't go out, come outside, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to panic. Ice. What? It's a ice. I'll turn it. Oh, now nice pose. Wait, there you wait, go. Wait. There you go. Um, so, so anyway, and then you know the other thing that we have going on, which because I I have to always circle back. Don't come over. Guinevere and I wrote a script together called "Don't Come Over." No, seriously, don't. That's the tagline. That's the tagline. Seriously, don't. And um, we're dying to get it made. So if anybody knows anybody who wants to finance a horror film, let me know. Um, yeah, can... and, and further to that point, I just want to be more in the camera when I say this, even though I'm so hot, I might die. Um, further to that point, uh, it's just, I play uh, June St. John's, who's a, um, a very successful romance novelist who's having writer's block um, for her next novel that everyone is, you know, dying for, badgering her to write. and she is losing her mind and it's gone off her meds and maybe killed her wife and buried her in the backyard and, maybe. Um, <laughs> and uh, she just keep people keep texting her her editor or like the assistant like other people the housekeeper uh, saying you know coming over and she's like don't come over and then they do anyway and then she kills them so that's the movie <laughs> but she tells them not to yeah i mean and she says don't come over and yet they do they do which is a thing so, that I like. I always tell my friends like, there's no way that knocking on my door is acceptable if yeah. you know me because yeah. that's shocking yeah. in, in this modern world. I'm not sure. I know how many. I, I don't know. You know, in the in in the rest of our country because there are much more suburban uh, areas and where maybe people do knock on each other's doors. But it is very, very, very rare. I think in Los Angeles, no matter what, for someone to just out of the blue come walking by and go hey I'm here I was just walking by and uh, Stephen Israel does that every now and then but uh, but most people don't they wait to get invited or they call and say I'm gonna be in the neighborhood are you gonna be around yeah. so it is a little like oh no and I haven't cleaned the house and what am I wearing I gotta change now oh he's even real close <laughs> <laughs> but I can't wait to do that because actually don't come over you know in all seriousness don't come over is a, a, a really cool examination of a, a, you know, something akin to bi bipolar disorder, it's paranoid personality disorder. And it's also um, just an interesting, so it's an inter interesting exploration of relationships within that disorder and, and how that disorder can unravel if it's not taken care of, you know, if you're not on your meds, if you're not doing any kind of breathing or controlled um, practice. You know, yeah. because she's a good person. I mean, the, the interesting thing for me is to show, because in all honesty, you guys, so there's no way you can't look at Guinevere and like her. Well, no, okay. There are times when you could because she will make sure that you, you, you see in her face that you shouldn't like her. <laughs> but, um, right? Yeah. What well, I mean, to me, the movie Repulsion with Catherine Jenner, the Polanski yeah. movie from... I think the late sixties that we watched with one earphone. Yes, um, is is a is a model just actor wise. Like it's so exciting to me to just take it all the way there. Like just yeah. lose your damn mind. Yeah. Help me, Jane. Yeah, <laughs> it's and gonna lose be your damn mind. I mean that like you know we wrote a whole. I I, I just needed to cut up a body with a chainsaw, and I was like Jane, let's think about the fact that like I personally. I, I wouldn't like just pick up a chainsaw and know how to work it. So let's have this woman kill someone and then take a moment to read the instructions of how to start a chainsaw. Yes, she goes out, she gets the chainsaw, she comes in, and so she studies like, it in front of the person who's dying. Oh, she's still dying, yeah? Yeah, yeah she's still dying. It's <laughs> anyway, we don't want to give away too much because that is <laughs> yeah, fun. That's that's the fun of it. Um, but yeah, I think it's like going to be 
so cool to get in there. And of course, I'm not going to be doing the really heavy lifting because I don't have to go crazy. I don't have to lose my mind. I mean, I've been looking for an excuse for like years. <laughs> okay, glad, glad we got one now. But it's good. It's really going to be fun. But it's been an interesting thing when I go looking for money because I find people really love the script and then just don't really know what to do with all that feminine energy. I mean, it's just loaded with summer and feminine energy. Yeah, there's one male character, but the other four people are women, right? So the four and then the two detectives are men, but they have two scenes, so they're not significant to this. So the whole film really revolves around women and femininity and sexuality and all this other stuff. And I find that people are just sort of like, what am I? Uh, what are we doing with that? I want this little puppy to come be on camera, but she's 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 deep in she's deep in her sniffing. You know, we might get Miss Marbles on camera when you leave, and it's just me and somebody new. <laughs> you know, maybe she'll get used to it and she'll come over. I highly recommend that everyone who ever wanted a dog. Why did you? What was the? How did it happen? How did you get her? I um, I'm a dog lover, like a passionate dog lover. It happened forever. With dogs, I help. I watch other people's dogs. I've like rescued dogs and fostered them. And but I always thought I'm too busy. I travel too much. My schedule is too erratic. And then yeah. I just saw this image of her. And oh, you saw like did they post a picture or something? And you were like, oh no. Yeah, I tortured myself with being on this thing called Adopt a Pet, where uh -huh. you tell them like the dog that you would want. And all uh -huh. I said was like under 10 pounds and uh, uh, female. And then they would, I would just get endless, endless dogs. And then I got her, the, an image of her one morning, and I was like, uh, God damn it. Don't do that, she's getting scared now. Oh, sorry, back. Mama, no, mama. Um, and I, I said, okay, if I'm still thinking about her and she's available in one week, I will do it. So you let her sit there for a week and go, fate will step in. Yes. If I'm supposed to have her, I will have her. And if I am not, I will. I did, which is maybe weird. But, I don't know if it's weird. But I don't know. I'm a Gemini. I'm easily distracted. Like, I've, I really needed to, like, test myself in terms of, like, the attention and uh, devotion. Like, I saw her and I was like, that's the one. And I was like, you're insane. You're just having a bad day. Like, you put one image of a dog you've never met. What do you mean that's the one? <laughs> I mean, I get it. Um, Bob and I are eventually going to get a dog. Fate. <clears throat> huh? Fate. Fate. Fate will bring the right dog. Mm. Though I have, no, so I decided that I, because everybody was like, don't get another Papillon. I'm like, all right, that's just like criticism to Winston, but fuck you, but all right. Because Winston was a hard dog. And he, he, he was, was a so nightmare, loving, but like, if you love dogs, you just love dogs, right? Right. And yeah, I loved him, and he loved me, and he kind of loved Bob. <laughs> 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 and, um, and so, you know, kind of is weird when everybody's like, oh, just don't get another Papillon. Like, like Winston was the representative of all Papillon. But I was like, okay, I'm not gonna do Papillon. I'm gonna get a miniature Australian Shepherd because I saw a picture and I was like, oh, the right size, they're really cute, but they're a little bit bigger, so Bob won't be worried about them. And they're really, they're super, super smart. And they're super smart. Now, three times I have seen twice in the street and once Betsy, my friend Betsy, texted me the other day and said, there is a Papillon Australian Shepherd mix. And I met two Australian Shepherd Papillon mixes miniatures on the street in the last two months. So now, now I can figure out how to have the best of both worlds and I can get a Papillon miniature Australian Shepherd and nobody can go, oh, she got another Papillon. Oh God. Not but, that barky but, but maniac. That, but that seems like such a, uh, well, I, I would have thought a rarefied combination, but you're like, Apparently not. Just, like, I mean, tons of them, like, there's a, there's a whole... It's either that or I'm just filter. supposed to have them. I don't know. Yeah. So I'm going to put into uh, some rescue places and request and see what I get. Because I'm willing to wait, because I've got Miss Marbles for two months, so... Hey. I've, I've got my dog. Hello, honey. Come on around. Come, Come around. Give oh, me a bye -bye. Come here. Come here. Isn't she cute? Can you guys hear her? Yeah. Aw, she's so cute. Um, so what do you have? Do you have anything? What's going on now? You know that Allison is a thing. Did that come out? Uh, yeah. Allison is, is a web series that I did. That's online at um, Tello. On Tello.com. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm working on pitching a TV show. Yeah. I'm working on writing a book. I'm working What's the book, though? 
uh, an elaboration of my childhood, but just the just the part where I was in a cult and then transitioned. So like you know, uh, like a, a ten year span of time. Not really a memoir, but a memoir, but a meta memoir. I, I haven't written it yet, so can't really tell you what it's gonna be. Um, but also, like because I wrote American Psycho and Charlie Says, which are arguably both dark movies in different ways. I'm really working on a rom-com. Really? Because I don't know if anyone who pays attention to me knows, but the first movie I wrote was a rom-com. Really? I'm scared of scary movies. I don't like scary things. Somehow I'm here, and obviously I like them enough to write about them, but I really want to just sort of flex my rom-com muscle and be able to say, like, no, this is also fun and cute, and, like, I'm so much... More comfortable. <laughs> is it gonna be a big budget thing or a little like indie indie project? I mean, does anyone want to give me a shit ton of money? <laughs> because because uh, I'd love to direct a rom com. Rom -com. I am the biggest biggest rom com sap in the world. Me too. Yeah, I I love them and I love them the most. I think I've identified why I love them the most is because I'm fascinated and impressed with people who we all love rom coms. And we all know that the, who's going to end up together in the end. Yeah. And so I'm just deeply impressed by writers and directors who continue to be like, it's about the journey. Like, we right. know they're going to end up in the end. Right. So, like, how, how much can you entangle us in this journey? Even though we know it's how it's going to end. There's, like, a safety. There's, yeah. a, there's a sweetness to it. But yeah. there's also, a, I'm like, it impressed me. Yeah. You know, that's also something interesting about horror movies. Because people right. usually know what's going to happen. And they don't mind you giving them away. That's what I found out after the fact, that they don't give you, mind giving you away spoiler. There's no such thing as a spoiler alert. Hmm. Like a lot of the websites wanted to have, could you give us kills? Could we premiere a kill? And I'm like, eh, it's a kill. I don't want to release oh. the kill. And they're like, no one cares. They're going to love it, and then they're still going to go see it. And my hmm. publicist said the same thing. So it's sort of weirdly, weirdly, weirdly similar. similar. <laughs> as much as you'd like to think you're pushing back against the darkness of horror, an actual fact. The You're not. But the uh, the lovely confinement of the genre is perhaps something I've always been responding to. Yes. <laughs> That's true. Oh my God, I'm so hot. I'm going to cry. No, we're getting out. It's over. <laughs> it's 6.30. I love you guys. Hi, Alba. Thanks for turning Thanks in. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next week.